Hey everybody out there, Chris and Mike here, and welcome back to another indie comic book review. And guys, this is the prelude to some big things that are going to be happening on this channel. Oh, yeah. I know you guys heard uh, the Twitter announcement, and I made an announcement on last week's review, and I made an announcement again on uh, the comic book haul this past week, where it's the news section. After reconsidering a lot of things that I was um, planning or thinking about doing for this site, after sitting down and really thinking about it, uh, there is going to be a major announcement video for this channel that's going to happen right after this video, and it's going to be effective immediately because we are already in the first week of April. Perfect time to start is the first week of any month, and we're in the first week of April. This review is for the books that came out on March 26th, the final week of March 2014. So, perfect time to make the announcement that things are about to shake up a lot on this channel. So, expect a huge, huge, huge announcement uh, about things that are going to be happening on this channel. With that, I'm going to leave it at that and urge you guys extremely to uh, watch the um, announcement video or update video because it will explain what's going to be going on starting with this coming comic review. Yep. But until then, let's get into the books this week. We've got a bunch of physical copies. We have 14 digital copies. And let's waste no time but get into it. Let me start off with my book so this yeah. way it'll give you your straight run of books. Yep. Vertigo Comics, The Wake, issue number 7 of 10. So Lee is now in jail. She was arrested at the end of the last issue, and now she is basically serving the um, government. Well, first we get a flashback of her when she was a child. Read the book. I'm not spoiling that part, and there's a few other parts I'm not going to spoil. But she's, uh, she's basically, it's like the Viking time. She's basically rowing the ship, and that's what they do when they're in jail. And you grow to hate this guy, because he's like the authority of um, yeah, he looks like a guy society, and she hates him. She wants to kill him. They get attacked by one of the huge mer people, and it becomes a huge fight. We don't know what happens to a friend Pub, who was also arrested, by the way. Um, but Dash shows up, the dolphin, and I'm not gonna spoil the ending because I want because it leads into obviously what happens in the next issue. Mm -hmm. But um, let's just say she meets a couple of friends. Not friends of hers, but new friends just in general. And that's basically the, the long and short of it. We do get a little bit of dialogue, a little bit more uh, about um, the frequency. The um, president or the gov... I forgot what they call her. What they call her exactly. Let me go to the beginning of the book and I'll tell you guys. Like that. Oh. Governess. The governess uh, orders that all the people be killed that heard that um, broadcast. She's a sick, twisted bitch. I hope she dies. I really do. She's sick and twisted. But beside the point, um, you can really read that and everything else. This book is definitely shaping up to be something really, really good. Scott Snyder is doing an awesome job with the writing and Sean Murphy's artwork just works with this book perfectly. Uh, this book, even though it took a, a little bit of a hiatus, definitely did not lose steam, and it's definitely picking up, and it might have a connection to the first part of the story arc. Uh -huh. Find out in future issues what I mean with that. So, that's this. I would highly recommend The Wake. It's an enjoyable read. I'm loving it, and I can't wait for the next issue. Yep. You have something from Vertigo, too, I believe. Uh... That one, the second one. This one? Yes. All right, I guess I'll start with this one then. Yeah, might as well get the companies out of the way. All one right. One. Uh, Virgo, Dead Boy Detectives, issue number four, where things are I didn't getting... think you'd be buying this book still. I, I don't know why, but something told me that it wasn't going to be Actually, something you like. Actually, it's really very interesting about, I mean, Charles and Edwin in this book, like, they're, like, um, trying to... Uh, <clears throat> prevent um, uh, Crystal from getting uh, her soul being taken away because the sister demon wants uh, because the demon wants uh, another part of her so that way they can get uh, back together again and uh, 
these bullies like um that are going after Charles and Edwin, they're like um like they really want uh that to happen with the whole dissecting thing and uh Crystal could actually see them, which is actually amazing. And uh things get a little bit out of hand when uh uh, Hannah transforms into this thing and attacks the uh, professor of uh, St. Hilarions and stuff like that. Um, and the two boys, they do everything in their power to just keep Crystal uh, out of trouble. She actually helps along. The three bullies, they go bye-bye, thank God, because I really didn't like those three bullies to start off with. And, um, like, they were merging with uh, Crystal to uh, fight against uh, her and everything, so that way things could go back to normal. And there's just a bunch of other things that I really don't want to give away, because, uh, you know, it's just really uh, something interesting that I think you guys should definitely read. But um, now uh, it looks like that Crystal's going to be with the two boys to help locate a missing person that they're uh, going to uh, go after and stuff. Oh, the puzzle piece. Yeah, and also Charles wanted to admit that he loved Crystal, but he couldn't find the words for it. So she thought, uh, oh, you just want me to help you on a mission, right? So, yeah, let's just go with that. So I thought that was uh, a moment right there. But I'm really enjoying this comic book. I really like uh, the... I'm shocked, It's yeah. the mystery and the whole... I, you know, I the more you, yeah I try to get interested book. I try to get interested when you talk about it but for some reason it's definitely a story that would unless it's me. too dark kind of for me yeah I mean yeah for some people it may or may not be of interest but I'm loving this I mean Dead Boy Detectives I can't wait to see what the next story arc's gonna bring for the two boys as well as for uh, Crystal. We are now going into Image Comics of The Walking Dead issue number 124 of The All Out War, chapter 10 of 12. Two more chapters. Oh my god. This issue, it, it, it just keeps getting more and more intense of, like, I have to know what happens when uh, we get to the end of the issue. So, um, so yeah, so this doctor, I can't, I'm trying to remember his name. Like, they mentioned his name uh, in the story, like, there are these walkers who uh, are in the way and stuff like that while uh, he's trying to drive away and stuff like that. And Rick is also trying to heal from the uh, the bow and arrow that got uh, hit in the chest. My penis? What? Point it down. Who? You? Which one? Never mind. Oh, what? The, the knee, I meant. Oh, I thought, I thought you were pointing to your... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's black and white, by the way, with... Uh, great artwork, and uh, there's lots of. Uh, About to say that's getting a little <laughs> X-rated there. <laughs> no, so um, you know Negan, like he wasn't swearing as much, although it was here and there basically, and Negan's just trying to uh, just kill Rick and everything, and um, and it's just a whole you know havoc and everything. So, uh... Day just, after was cleanup, I know that. Yeah, and there was lots... And Jesus is, uh, basically, uh... Like, he's actually, uh, like a really good guy and all that, and, uh... It's like he really cares about helping out and everything. And they find out stuff about what was on the weapons. Exactly, uh... Because, uh, Negan has, uh, some, uh, stuff that, um... He wants to, basically... He wants to take over what Rick does, which is why he so, wants to kill him. You're not telling the main part. Main thing is they all the weapons they were using uh had dry blood from other zombies. So basically even if they didn't kill the people they were wounding, they the people they wounded were infected with the zombie blood and they were all gonna die off one by one and Rick was shot by an arrow in the previous issue which right. was soaked in zombie blood. So now Rick the the whole point is Rick might get sick and die uh, and become a zombie. Okay, but I didn't want to get too much away. Basically. Mike, you didn't give anything. Well, basically though, the comic book is uh, it, it's turning out to be um, a really interesting comic book that you can't put away. That I can't put away. But uh, I recommend it for adult readers, basically, to read this. So. Um, 
definitely uh, can't wait to see how all this is going to end. Uh, IDW, Ghostbusters Mass Hysteria Part 2. This is the, the a different, I think this is the subscription cover. I forgot what, it, what kind of cover it was, but I got the special cover. Yeah, and I like the cover actually with slime in the background, which I thought was pretty cool. So, uh, like in last issue, um... Winston's on his honeymoon. Yeah, from, uh, the girl he married, uh, Tia. And then Janine gets a call from somebody, and, uh, we really, uh, don't know who it is, because she doesn't say who it is. And, uh, there's, like, uh, the, this raining blood that happened from what we saw in the last issue. And, uh, they're just trying to find out... Is it just me? I have a question, but... The weird nails. See the nails here and the nails there? The artist really draws nails. I thought that Dana was possessed because of the nails, but then I noticed Janine has the same thing. I know. That was, I didn't even uh, realize that, actually. But uh, So, yeah, so Dana and Janine have a little talk with each other. Janine says that... that not Janine. Uh, Dana says that he, she wants... Um, them to uh, see if her house is haunted and everything but she doesn't want to see Peter because of all the things that happened in the past with uh, you know the pink slime and everything and you know her son Oscar is now older like in a teenager uh, way so she wants the new people to come and investigate and we get these like floating cars and everything this is great artwork, by the way. And they're trying, and uh, they're trying to figure out um, what it is, and uh, it's like a localized entity that's causing uh, lots of uh, what's that word? Uh, subatomic uh, levels. Basically, everything's just floating, and just not them in general. So uh, we get uh, Agent Ortiz and Kylie Griffin who go to Dana. Part of the new Ghostbusters. Part yeah. of the new Ghostbusters. Uh, Dana really doesn't like uh, Agent Ortiz because she like asks her like these personal questions and stuff like that, and she thinks like it was like she's actually encouraging the spirits to haunt her. That's what she thought, Agent Ortiz. So uh, basically, uh, she also uh, Kylie talks about why she doesn't want her to meet with uh, Pete uh, Vegman. And uh, there's just like a whole bunch of other dialogue where they try to find out um, like what's wrong with her house and everything and why it's haunted and stuff like that. So there's just like uh, a bunch of other stuff that's going on. We also get uh, the Tiamat story along with uh, how they might be involved with all this uh, raining blood and everything. Then we get a little bit of the uh, Winston... Uh, and his uh, new uh, wife moments and stuff like that. And there are these talking birds, actually, which is kind of weird because I think the raining blood uh, summons, uh, like, demons and stuff like that for animals to talk or whatever other supernatural stuff happens. But uh, something uh, happens to Dana. And the next issue looks really that. interesting. So. You saw the cover to the next issue, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Guess we're Just wanted to make sure. Action there. So, uh, this is, uh, it, it's just really everywhere. I just want to find out more about this raining blood, really, and more of how it's going to play into this story, which is actually what I like about this story of, uh, Ghostbusters. Now into Xenoscope. Yeah, it's another Mike heavy week, guys, but you guys know it's polar opposites with me and Mike. Yeah. Grim Fairy Tale presents Wonderland Clash of Queens, issue number two. And this issue um, was really excellent, as, as always, because Xenos Xenoscope provides uh, like great and excellent books and stuff. And uh, there's just a whole big story about... Um, the uh, Ebony Blade, and uh, they're telling the other people that it has returned. And there's like uh, the queens right here who you see with excellent artwork who want the Ebony Blade. And she sends, and basically the different queens sends their guards out to basically go and fetch the Ebony Blade. 
So that way... Uh, so all four queens are fighting for the one blade. Yeah, it's really... Really int interesting story. Yeah, it is a really interesting story. Like, it's just... Um, like, all of them just want just that sword. And that's what basically uh, it's all about. And really the power, along with uh, one of the bartenders um, who actually finds out more information about the blade, which is actually going to play a good part in this uh, story, I feel. So... Um, there's, uh, lots of, uh, other stuff that happens, like, uh, they have, a the blade to reclaim for their queen and everything, and I think they're the, uh, the... Diamond? The diamonds, yeah. Who, uh, actually get more of a advantage in this issue, like, that's what I felt. What happened to Wonderland? But Wonderland, I was just about to say the same thing. Like, it's just terror everywhere. And there's this uh, new character who uh, is going to possibly wow. play... Wow, I looked at that character and I said that yeah. character's name in my head before I even read it. Raven Gregory, get out of my head. Uh-huh. I tell you, the I writers... I knew you were going to say the that. Writers, I knew you were going the to writers say that. at Xenoscope are spectacular. Yeah. Always love Pat Chan's writing. I really enjoy Ralph Tedesco's work, and I love Raven Gregory's work. It's like there's a bunch, there's so many uh, different stories going on, but all the writing. And you know the thing is, they try, they keep their universe so you know together and close knit that it it feels you know it's yeah. a pleasure to read anything. And, and there's just so much in here. I, I I can't give it away because it's just so excellent, and you guys have definitely got to pick it up. Also, what came out this week was Barmaids and Quest. However, Mike and I did not, we missed out on a few issues in Quest, and we missed out on a few issues in uh, Barmaid. Uh, when we get the um, digital form with the chapters, we'll uh, go through it chapter by chapter like we did Robin Hood Volume 2. Yes, definitely. We'll get to that. <clears throat> Dark Horse Comics, so this is my book of the week, Tomb Raider, issue number two. It has to go to this, because <clears throat> there's a whole story. Well, first of all, we find out in the last issue where... Um, well, stuck there for a bit, that uh, we saw how uh, Jonah was uh, sacrificing for uh, Laura Croft and everything, and she just does everything in her power just to help save him, you know, with uh, all the stuff, you know, like, he, he it was like, uh, he she was a close friend to Jonah, and she just tried everything to get him out of the trailer, and, uh, you know, he, he does uh, wake up and everything. And there's this guy, um, Ray. Or is it? Yeah, I think his name is Ray. And uh, he just tells her about um, a box that um, that Jonah was holding. And he wanted to know more about it. So after that, there's like a little bit of a fight that she has against Ray. And he basically goes over the edge basically. But there's more that we have to find out about, uh, like, Jonah wants Laura to take the box because the cost she has to watch out for they, uh, and all that. So uh, we learn more about um, what it's about um, as we read the issue, and if you want to learn more about it, of uh, the two statues that she has, you definitely have to read the book, because one of the statues is one that she should not be having because it could cause lots of dangerous stuff along with other uh, things in general and it's actually called um what's it called makara part woman part crocodile part everything else it's an instrument of revenge and nobody should really have it so she meets up with jocelyn uh that has one of the artifacts to the dragon and there are four pieces and there are three, and I believe from what I hear, there are three peaches, three peaches, very nice, three pieces. And this guy named Matsu comes in and threatens to kill Jocelyn's daughter if all the pieces aren't uh, going to be collected to the dragon, or all the pieces in general. So she sends out a uh, lore to uh, go get it in another, uh, you know, few hours, or else... Uh, they're going to kill uh, Jocelyn's daughter. And the element that was there uh, makes a real big appearance in the end. So, mm -hmm. oh boy. <clears throat> How Laura's going to get out of this, 
I don't know, but after uh, playing Tomb Raider games in the past, this one uh, backwards. I I'm I'm good. I'm okay. No, you're not. This story really actually um, is building up to something really interesting. Like, I'm not sure if it's gonna relate to the games so much of the Tomb Raider games, but if it's not, it's actually headed towards the right direction. Along with the dragon pieces, because it had to do some with that in uh, the second Tomb Raiders game. And with that, I'm done with my comic books and all that. I'll give you a rest. I'll do Star Wars next. Okay. So, take it away. Star Wars Legacy, issue number 13. Anaya, Anya, Anaya is now stranded on this planet because her ship was destroyed by the bounty hunter. And her ship was basically Raman's ship, who he actually took her and was going to turn her in because he believed she left him behind. The, the whole backstory again. So now the whole issue is her versus this unknown bounty hunter. And it jumps back and forth between other characters, like the Empress, um, who's also a Jedi, uh, Empress um, uh, Bell uh, on Coruscant. She's the Empress, but she's also a um, Jedi, and she thinks that Anaya really did kill the um, Jedi Knight, so she wants oh, yeah, revenge. I that. Yeah. So Anaya basically, in the end, it's her versus the bounty hunter. Things don't go so well. However, Ramen, Ramid, shows up and saves her, but she doesn't trust him. But as the last page says. Um, He's the best option there. It's either him or the bounty hunter. So there's like a big decision to make here. Well, she's going to go with him. I mean, it's obvious she's going to go with him. He's like, um, yeah, no, he just says, I, I'm your best, I'm the best option you have. And then the next so issue no is, when it rains, it kills. So, yeah. Interesting issue, once again, I feel like I jumped in way too in the middle of something, so it's still hard to grasp what's going on. I mean, 13 issues in, and I started at, like, issue 10. Uh, but I'm sure at some point things will switch over to a new story arc, and I'll be able to talk without feeling like a complete idiot. Uh, so let's go into... Actually, uh, me and you read this book, and I want, I want to get this out of the way. Oh, yeah. Halo Escalation, issue number four. Now... Normally, uh, the past three issues, I enjoyed, I really liked it. It had its fair share of action and um, dialogue. This issue, however, bored the crap out of me. All it was was page after page after page after page. After page, it was of it was dialogue. just talking, and it was going. I don't know where it was, it was going. It was. Where was this going? It was in the aftermath of what happened in the previous three issues, and setting up for what's going to be happening in the future issues. But it's all talking. They're still trying to find the leak in the UNSC. Um, you have the captain who goes and meets with his friend, who is part of the. Um, uh, she was part of press or something. Um, and he's looking for information that she could probably gather. Then it jumps back and forth. In the future, there's a distress call. They go to it, and they end up getting ambushed by the Covenant. And it actually ends. And finally, the um, action picks up. And then as fast as it comes is as fast as it goes back to the past again. And it just kind of ends on a, like, blank kind of ending. I don't know. I was just... Very bored, and I felt like it was a chore to get through some of this book I only, this week. I only got halfway through it because I was like, <laughs> no. That's what I said. I, I, I just said yeah, I wanted it. Mike to read it so that maybe I thought it was me because it was one of the um, No, it, it was middle you. books. It was just so much dialogue, so much to take in. Too much. It just led to just... It was going now, I, everywhere. I, keep I understand the book can't be action-packed every second of the book, but when you have a book that's straight up people talking with each other for an entire issue... <laughs> how can you take so much in there? It's too much. It, it just ended up being too much, in my opinion. I mean, it can only take so I much, mean, you know? I mean, you need a good balance of dialogue and action. And really, nothing happened. It was just a bunch of people in a bunch of different conversations talking about basically, essentially, the same things that we've been seeing. 
So that's my rant on Halo. Next mic is yours. Which one? That one? Mm -hmm. Yes. This one I found actually really Bloodhound cool. issue number five. Oh, five. This is the last uh, issue. Right. And in this issue, um, T T Termith, I think his name is, like he helps Cleave and the agent go into the jail cell. But th he's uh, not telling them what they want to know. And what we know about him is that he can uh, do transporting uh, through the darkness, but he can't in the light. And then another interesting part about this issue is that we get this uh, scientist that we saw a few issues back about all uh, mutant kind and everything. We find out backstory of him that, um, well, after the fight scene, that is, where all three of them fought against him. And he has this this thing, like, he could, like, hold his arm up and there's, like, a shield where he can protect himself and everything. And we get a little bit of a backstory because of uh, his son dying and everything. He just doesn't like superhuman kind. And he just wants to kill them all just to avenge his son's death. So, um, we get the little bit of a thing of why he doesn't like them. But, uh, Cleve and him, like, they get into a huge bloody fight. Like, this comic was really, really graphic. It, it, I'm looking at it right now, and I just couldn't believe yeah, I'm looking at it right how now. graphic it was. Like, the fight was just... Like, it was a little bit of a close fight, like, uh, well, I'll give the spoilers that he won, but let's just say that, uh, after the fight, after he broke through his shield, because he's really a strong man, so I mean, he reminds me of Guido from X Factor for some reason, I don't know why, when the lights went off, like, this is what confused me, when the lights uh, went off and came back on, Cleve was dead on the floor, like, uh, if you keep going down more. Like, after the fight scene, like, right there, the lights went off, and then when the lights came back on, there he is right there on the floor. And I'm like, and the, the guy's, like, saying, like, what the hell happened? That's what I want to know. And I thought that he died, but apparently there was a funeral where he's right there. So I'm figuring out, and I'm saying, wait a minute, time out. I saw him down the floor, and, I'm, and I know that they're not just seeing him as a ghost because he's still alive because he meets up with the agent at the end of the issue saying that he sh he'd rather go back to the hospital or really back to prison where there's, like, I guess, peace and quiet for him and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just couldn't get that part. Like, I saw his body dead. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I just saw his body dead, and I just uh, don't know how he just came back to life after that. That's what really confused me in that part. But other than that, the five issues, I would definitely give this a mix between a 4 to 4.5 out of 5 for the whole five issues of Bloodhound. Really amazing story. All right, and with that, we're getting the times up, so I'll give us a sec, and we will continue with the rest of the books for this week. Yep. All right, and we're back, and now we're going to go into the rest of Dark Horse and continue forward till the end. We are now at Blackout issue number one, I believe. Yes, yep. issue number one. This is issue number one. I remember one. reading Blackout in the Dark Horse Presents. I was really interested in the character. Mike, how did um, Blackout feel for you? Because I didn't get a chance to read I this I really issue liked uh, his origin story about how uh, like he controls the shadows and everything. Yes. And how he could walk through uh, walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I really found him to be a really interesting character. And in where these people are going uh, after him. Because of, uh, you know... Things that, um, you know, his name is Bob, uh, Bob by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has uh, an investigation that uh, he has to do. Because there was like a killing of something that happened along with uh, other stuff. And if you want to find out, you can definitely read the book. The artwork is great, by the way. Yep, same as the one from and, Dark uh, Horse Presents, I believe. Yeah, and the agent is uh, trying to tell him, you know, uh, about all the drives and everything that he's trying to get. He's like saying it's not like you could walk through walls and everything, but he can because he's blackout, but she doesn't know that. So uh, he goes through uh, the walls and he tries to get this uh, drive that has like a certain type of information. He goes into a different realm basically. He can create this black hole, he goes into a different realm and then he can pop out again yeah. anywhere he wants. And he could, like for example, he'll make a little portal, stick his hand and grab something, go back into the other yeah. dimension and then close the portal behind him. Yeah, but the guys catch him um, 
when he was trying to, uh, you know, do that uh, sneak move. And then things don't turn out so well after that because, um, you know, they, they try to drag him in uh, out of the portal. And at the end of the issue, there's a bunch of things where um, there's this woman that comes in that wants to have a talk with this uh, person. Mm-hmm. So that's it, and I did look at uh, yeah, the second the tiger story, thing, the Kai the Tiger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks really interesting. It's about these. Uh, there's this old guy who uh, is um, like I I saw him as like a little bit of a ant character, like a hobo, I would say. And there's like this big, huge spirit that's demon. around him, or or a demon, and he's asking the tiger to help him out. So that's where it just leaves you off. It was like a little bit of a short story more than a uh, an ongoing story. I'm surprised you're still reading this, but Furious. Oh yes, issue Furious. number three. This comic book it actually talks more about her childhood life, basically going back and forth of uh, her and her father. You know, like uh, how she wanted to be a uh, actress. Uh, actress and stuff like that mm -hmm. because uh, we get the whole thing in the issues where uh, this woman was doing all the advertisings and stuff like that and uh, Furious or they know as the Beacon uh, didn't like it very much and what she does in this issue is that um, she she gets it like really uh, bad in this issue like uh, this uh, she gets like stuck under this whole big debris when she was trying to uh, do a mission and um, you know, she just really gets a bad in this issue. I, I really don't want to give too much away because um, there's just a bunch of stuff that happens and she's just trying to find her way out of it. Um, artwork looks... Uh, like, it looks okay, basically. Like, not too bad, not too good. Like, just a little bit okay. And she finds a way to get out of the debris, and she has a fight scene with this guy who was behind uh, the whole thing. And it gets uh, lots of uh, explosions and uh, lots of fire in the background. <sighs> and uh, I think the guy, like, sort of knew her, basically, for what she was. Like, I really don't know like how to explain it, but basically he wanted to kill her. To, um... Just get that out of the way of the whole plot of uh, the story. So um, in this uh, issue, uh, as we keep reading on, uh, you know, I like that picture, by the way, where she like flies out and everything. And um, there's just so much that went on this uh, issue. Like it was just a lot of things to take in, uh, basically, uh, in this issue. Yeah. yeah, and I, 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 I thought they talked about a childhood life in this one. I guess they didn't. I could have sworn they did. Maybe it was a different book. I read too much. I know. We get introduced to a new character at the end. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough. And she looks like uh, she's gonna be one crazy person. So. All right. So next we have Captain Midnight issue number. I think. Nine. Nine. And Captain Midnight, the whole issue is basic, is uh, him going after Fury Stark. I love the art. Yeah. And he's going after Fury Stark because Fury Stark's talking about how he killed uh, her father and everything. And they, she just wants her and her men to kill him. But Captain Midnight didn't come alone because he had a group of uh, four teams, I, I think, that were with him. So... Uh, Things get a little bit out of control when the uh, tank uh, pops open with uh, the shark that actually killed one of Fury Stark's members. And it was about to kill Fury Stark, but Captain Midnight, being the superhero that he was, uh, saved her, but wanted to bring put her, her under her, arrest. Put her under arrest and to bring her to justice. So then here's the thing that got really interesting. She talks about uh, how Chuck actually made uh, a deal with her about getting into the whole industry and Captain Midnight saying you're bluffing like he would not do that and I remember seeing this from issues back like remember in issues back where uh, he was actually uh, doing it for the right cause and everything because uh, 
she he didn't want uh, the girl to die or anything so he says I'll give you all the industries and every information that you want and Captain Midnight not to know about it so after hearing that like Captain Midnight just couldn't believe his ears of what he heard so at the end of this issue oh by the way um, uh, L Plus, I think his name was or Heliplex like let go down Helios Helios uh, Helios thank you actually kills Fury Stark and Captain Midnight's like what the hell like what was that all about and then he says like you know I did what was right that you could never do so he did the job for him is what he was saying in essence so now after uh, Captain Midnight heard all of this he now wants to go uh, see a, a Chuck and uh, see why all this was said and why... A man out of time. I love how he says it like that. Exactly. So uh, I wouldn't want to be in Chuck's shoes if I were him right now. Especially with Captain Midnight, how he was really pissed off in the end. And I would too if there were secrets being kept from me. So I could actually feel his uh, reasons to be pissed off. For the right reason. All right, let's go into some Dynamite. We only have one book from Dynamite this week, and it's Ash and the Army of Darkness, annual for 2014. I skimmed I it, Mike it. read it. I love the artwork in it. I will say that. <laughs> yeah, so in this uh, story, Ash is uh, going up against these witches, and there are three witches from uh, you know different dimensions and making beautiful women turn ugly. So the sorcerer of uh, Ash uh, says to him that there's a way that he can uh, defeat him and he drinks this uh, I guess potion or something that he gives to him or, or uh, antidote and he goes into uh, these different universes for the first one he goes into uh, like way ancient back Egypt. in time in ancient uh, Egypt and he meets up with these women, like, saying, like, oh, hey, uh, have you seen any witches coming by? And they point to where the witch was. And he uh, goes up against the witch to kill her, although the witch didn't come alone because there were men, or well, one man there, and Ash took him down like it was nothing, really. So, witch number one was killed. And, you know, and what was funny is that like the women were like so like impressed that he did that that he gets sucked back out and goes into another time where the second witch is taking place and it's actually on a pirate ship actually full of women and of course Ash Pacific Ocean off the coast yeah, of Africa yeah Ash is a ladies man this issue like that's what I really loved about this issue and the artwork I the artwork was so amazing like it was just... It was save the beautiful ladies, and then right before sex, he gets taken away. Because that's basically what they Exactly. Say. And uh, there was a shark thing, which is how Second Witch died. So, uh, no. talk about Shark Week. No, no, it, it was the, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, that's why I was saying talk about Shark Week. And then, of course, he's like, oh, no. And he just gets taken out. And he goes into the last time zone to kill the third and final witch. Arizona. Of it's Arizona. That massive ancient cavern. And this one was uh, more along the lines of a family that he met and uh, that talk about the the witch and everything. It was more like a Western. Yeah, I was just going to say it looks Western. It, it looks like a Western type, this one, when they go to Arizona. And the third witch was a real challenge for him because he almost did not uh, win this one, but he found a way to win against her, and I'm not going to say how. And just like before, he gets sucked out when he gets the whole giggity thing going on, or almost going on. And he goes back to Sorcerer saying, you know, what the hell with all this? I came back in my own time and I didn't know what all this was. So he goes to the Sorcerer who could answer the whole thing, the real Sorcerer. And basically he winds up making out with her. That's why I completely right after there. all that, I don't after blame all him. that, I'm just... I, I, I was laughing, like, ladies' man, right there, so go Ash, is all I can say for that one. Next is from Boom Studios and yeah. Archaea Black Label. Yes, it's Hacktivist, issue number three of four. Yeah, and in Hacktivist, it more focuses on Ed's uh, point of view, where he's in uh, uh, t Tanzania. 
Tunzania, thank you. I, I was trying to say the name, like I knew how to say it, but I couldn't really uh, think how to. And there's like all these reporters that are saying, you know, what's going on and everything and what happened to Ed, and he didn't want to answer it. So Ed meets up with this new woman. She was who, in the first issue, I believe. Yeah, and she's the uh, Save Yourself, uh, basically uh, the leader of the Save Yourself thing. And there's like just a whole bunch of dialogue, like they talk about themselves and causing like another revolution and stuff of what happened uh, in the past and everything. And it was just so, so, so much in this issue. Like, it was just focusing on Ed's point of how he's going to change the whole thing around of what he used to do. He's going to redeem he's going, himself. Right, basically. and he's going to change it for the better instead of making it all wars and uh, everything else. So... I guess he's going up against his friend or something because yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, because his because his friend just wanted to just cause a revolution and all of havoc and everything in uh, Tunisia, and Ed really didn't like that because he comes up with all these uh, things like all these uh, drawings and whatnot that leads into something. It's not that it leads into nothing; it leads into something. And in the next issue of this. Uh, he, uh, Ed's friend finds out more answers, or that he's going to uh, find more answers from what I saw. Looks so, good. So, yeah, um, I don't know if Ed's ever going to go back or not, but if he does... Um, oh, and I left, I, I missed one from Dynamite, I'm sorry. Oh. This one's all yours, because you're the, you're the yeah. My Little Pony fan. No, I'm not. It's My Little Phony, a brony adventure. Fandom is tragic. The reason why I like this issue was because number one, it wasn't referring to my, it wasn't a reference uh, to My Little Ponies. Like they weren't actually using their real names. It's these two guys who go to a convention, and they're showing a new episode of, uh, calling it uh, My Little Phony, basically with with ponies, basically, and uh, there's like parties and everything, and, and yeah, I said the same thing myself. Uh huh, uh huh. It was weird. Very, very weird. And then this guy's like saying, oh, why can't they do like what they did before with all the... Basically, the old generation didn't like the way the new episodes were. And the new generation said, oh, what are you talking about? Like, this was awesome. And there was a whole uh, war and everything where the cops had to separate them. And that was the whole thing. And we do get to see him again. And uh, the guy actually finds out uh, who he was and everything. And uh, the, the thing that got me really questioning, like, why was that the pe these people who at the convention actually want to make themselves half man, half horse, or basically half the horse's head and half the human body. And, oh my God, I, I, I really found this to be a very weird issue. But in another way, I laughed because it didn't have anything to do with just My Little Ponies. It's basically a whole tragic's happening, and it's up to them as half man, half pony, or half pony, half human body, to actually save this whole entire world. Basically, to put their differences aside and to work together. I mean, there were some parts that were graphic and disgusting. I Some parts? Okay, mainly all of them with the whole demon coming in and uh, eating the person who was behind the whole My Little Pony thingy. But I won't get into that much because that is very creepy. Even when I look at it, it's very creepy. So, uh, yeah. I'm glad it's a one shot because... I'm horrified. I, I was horrified too. But I was laughing in a way because it, it wasn't saying anything about My Little Ponies or anything, so... Godzilla Rulers of Earth, issue number 10. It's the two brother uh, uh, giants. I love the opening, though, I will say this, with the uh, sperm whale, and then you see Godzilla, and it just scales Godzilla perfectly. So anybody who's questioning how big Godzilla is, read the first couple of pages. Lots of dialogue. I'm going to skip all the dialogue this time because I got burned by Halo this week. Mm -hmm. Um, but the two brothers, um, who are, like, gig gigantic, um, Sasquatches, 
so to speak, are Sanda and they look like Gyra, they look like Gyra. giant swamp things. Really. Well, basically, the fight in this issue is first the two brothers fought each other. Godzilla jumps in, and the two brothers fight Godzilla. And after they take Godzilla out, they go right back to fighting each other for a bit. And then Godzilla gets whacked with some uh, with a uh, gas truck. And he just bows out of the entire fight because we don't know why, but he got really hurt. He got hurt bad. And then both brothers get carried away. And then we get um, one of those um, undersea, um, the Devarian, Vo Devonians uh, from the undersea. Oh, he from the previous familiar. story arc. Yeah, the previous story arc. He's like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to warn you about the Devonians. Um, attack uh, or their plan so basically it's a sea monster basically he's warning the he wants to warn the people of earth uh, or the people above the ocean about his people coming uh to attack okay and that's that's the long and short of it again if you're not one of those people that jumps uh that really is into that um godzilla you might not like it but i'm enjoying godzilla i missed a book actually and we're going to walk out of idw two seconds ago into the eye for image Mike read Protectors Inc. I missed this. Yes, and Protectors issue number five. Protectors Inc. Issue number five. Yeah, and this issue was all about uh, Detective John. I think his name was Detective John. He's trying to find out about the murder of uh, you know who killed uh, either his name was Jason or or was something, and he calls the whole Pro Protectors Inc. team and asks them questions about you know. Well, you look like you were the one who probably killed him, and then they talk about where they were at the time. And he's just questioning everyone else and saying, look, I could do this all night and everything, because I have no plans and everything, but I want to find out who did it and who murdered, uh, you know, who was uh, in the murder scene. And that's really the long and short of the whole story. It, it was basically the detective asking the Protectors Inc.'s question, one of them actually came forward and said that he knew of uh, someone that he should go and ask more questions to, which is going to be in the next issue of uh, the story. So maybe she, if you want to find out who it is, read the book, she might have more of the answers that could lead him closer to who the person was. And what I like about the comic book, like I, like I said before, it has lots of action, mystery, and suspense to know who did. Because there's one guy that came in that was in the hood and everything, and we don't know who it was. And he and he or she was part of the murder scene. So, that's uh, well, that's why there was a mask and goggles, because wow. we don't know who it is. So. I'm going to briefly touch on this. The X-Files Conspiracy, issue number two, it's the grand conclusion. Once again, the big crossover event from IDW that I had high hopes for didn't exactly go the way I was hoping. Kind of, let's put it this way, everything comes full circle and in the end basically the universe is, as I quote this book, redundant and uh, they they uh, created a loop. So basically everything that happened in that universe that we were reading is basically this doesn't take place in the X-Files universe, it doesn't take place in any of the IDW universes, it's its own special universe which basically got erased. Oh. Huh. Because, yeah, it just, I don't know. It, I, I briefly read into this because I honestly only read it for the times. This story kind of just went south for me after. Um, I didn't, I wasn't really a big fan of X-Files. It just didn't I mean, work for me. For Ghostbusters, it was really good. But then the same thing with that, Turtles. Turtles was okay at best. It wasn't yeah, But then after that, it went, eh, Yeah. Eh. So do your number one, and then I do my yes. gigantic conclusion, and don't take too long because I got a lot. For to the about. kids, Rocky and Bowinkle have made a comic Moose book. Moose and Squirrel, or oh, the Flying Squirrel, actually. Well, there was a Flying Squirrel. All right. Well, basically, in this story, um, like there's like a it's like a psychic story where uh, Bowinkle gets uh, a psychic power after. Uh, like he goes into this uh, machine and stuff like that 
and he knows like one, two, three, like uh, what's going to happen, and everything. And the person the that does the stock market he hired was actually uh, Boris and the uh, Natasha. Natasha, thank you. Who who always? Oh my movie. God, Dudley Do Right is in and this And there was a Dudley Do Right story that was an intermission to the book because it goes back to the story in general and. Basically, I do some with perfume and donkey smell perfume. You could read it if you want to know because I couldn't. Yeah. So they go back to the story about uh, Bullwinkle being a psychic and everything and helping the guy with his stock market. And Natasha and Boris, like, they just tried to get Rocky and Bullwinkle, as they mm -hmm. always try to do. So, uh,. After that, uh, Bullwinkle gets hit in the head with a hammer, and now he can't uh, do psychic powers anymore based on that. So, after that, uh, that was it. Really funny comic book. It really reminds breaks the fourth wall because I like how Bullwinkle says in the end his last word bubble is, "I predict an ad on the next page for the next issue," and it's the end. It's the end. <laughs> it was really funny. Absolutely recommend you get this issue. I'm really happy that they're bringing cartoons back into comic books. That's what really makes it awesome. This is my book of the week. Transformers Dark Cybertron finale. It's not even numbered. It's just Dark Cybertron Chapter 12. That's how it's labeled. That's how you can find it. You just type in Transformers Chapter 12 or Transformers Dark Cybertron Number 2 or whatever, just type in chapter 12, and that's the single issue. It's not numbered. It is a one-shot. It basically takes every single thing, every single series, and brings it together in this book. So everything's come, everything's culminated to this point in time. Bumblebee's dead. Right. Spoiler alert if you, didn't, if you haven't been reading, and you shouldn't be listening to this if you haven't read it yet, because you guys know I'm going to spoil something I really like. The Minicons are now attacking Cybertron, so you got Metroplex, you got The Lost Light, You've got Devastator, you've got everybody fighting uh, the Minicons. You have Optimus Prime and everybody from the Dead, Sp the dead Universe is back, thanks to, um, uh, why names, the names do this to me all the time. It does to me too, you're not the only one. Thanks to Brainstorm. Basically, they use Nova Prime's body and Brainstorm's body as, the, um, as a bridge, the, the bridge to come back. Uh, everybody from the Dead Zone who is part of the Dead Zone, Cup, Cyclone, uh, Cyclonus, and, um, and Nightbeat, need to be cured or else they're going to just end up dying again in the current universe. So, actually, it turns out that <coughs> Optimus and Ultra Magnus are the ones that confront Shockwave. And then, of course, uh, Shockwave's already fighting uh, Megatron. So it's the three of them versus Megatron. Um, you have all the Cybertronians fighting the Minicons. The fight actually win. They actually do win the fight in the end, and they take the fight then to I forgot what the gigantic uh, robot was, but anyway, it's the main focal point is Shockwave, and this is the hugest spoiler of them all. Ladies and gentlemen, do not watch the rest of this review until you read this issue if you have not read it already. Okay, I'm warning you. This came out two weeks ago, but still. Okay, here we go. Megatron takes the Autobot symbol from the dead Bumblebee's from Bumble, Bumblebee's dead body and places it over his Decepticon logo. And they're all trying to wake Shockwave up and say, you know, you you can't do this. You know, we can change the future. Basically, Megatron in the last issue admitted that his ways were wrong. He lost the war when he started to fight. Uh, and basically, he takes the symbol, he erases it, puts the Autobot logo on. He's like. Uh, my friend Bumblebee fought for freedom, an honest freedom, inspired by Prime, unlike any that had come before. My life has been dedicated to fighting this badge, but no more. As of today, I am a different person, and I can change, and so can you, because they're telling Shockwave he can change. So basically, Megatron becomes an Autobot. Mm. That's the long and short of it. And Shockwave doesn't believe it. Uh, he tries to fight it, and then Optimus kind of reaches out to him and says, You have the power of time. You can see, look into the past. You used to be Senator Shockwave. We used to be friends. Uh, think about the time, and, and he gives a story. He actually reaches out and tells him a story about way back when. And uh, Shockwave snaps out of it because he has the power of time. So he reaches back into the past, and he becomes himself again. 
but he can't shut the time the, the the machine off. The only way to do it is to kill him. So, guess what Optimus and Megatron are forced to do? Uh huh. Ending, however, uh, it turns out that Galvatron it might be leading the Decepticons that are pissed off at Megatron for what he did and believe he basically betrayed all of them by joining the Autobots. So we still might have Decepticons. But now, the big ending is Optimus and now Autobot Megatron facing, you know, the remnants of what have, what's happened on Cybertron and basically, as Optimus says, moving forward. I want to make sure it's like, um, are you ready for what happens next? And then um, Megatron says, let's find out. And basically, in the book, Optimus basically says, or... Um, both Optimus and Megatron say the future is Autobots, and as a matter of fact, that is what's going to be going on in More Than Meets the Eyes, Robots in Disguise, and the miniseries, which is going to be Windblade. The whole title at the top is going to be Dawn of the Autobots, and I'm probably going to be jumping back into physical copies of the Transformer books, starting with the next issue. And there's going to be a big announcement with the uh, with the Transformers books. But once again, this is part of the announcement that's coming after this video. So guys, thank you so much for sticking with us. We are all, we are about to get the uh, alert. So don't forget to check out Comic Related and ComicFrontline.com. Together we are your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Stay tuned for the update. I'm not going to say anything else other than that for right now. But it's going to follow this video and it is going to be a major shakeup for this channel. Yep. Thank you guys for sticking with us. Take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and we will see you guys in the update video. Take care, everybody. Later, guys.